If you set out in the universe, would you ever loop back around to where you started, like you would on the surface of the Earth? Or would you go on forever and ever? Does our universe have holes in it? Is it twisted, like a Mobius strip? And if we're inside our universe, can we ever hope to figure out what the shape of it is? It turns out that the answer is yes. Recent observations in astronomy are starting to give us hints. The shape of our universe isn't something we think about often, but knowing it can help us answer some of our biggest cosmic questions like, is the universe finite or infinite? And how did the early universe come about? In this video, we're going to take a look at what the latest scientific research says and see how our universe could be more bizarre than we ever previously imagined. To even begin to answer the question of the shape of our universe, we need to understand what is meant by shape. Cosmologists mean something a bit different from you and me when they say shape. To understand exactly what they mean, we have to go back to 1736, to the beautiful Prussian city of Konigsberg. This city had seven bridges that crossed back and forth across the river, interconnecting the two banks and islands. The people of the city wondered, could you take a leisurely stroll through Konigsberg and cross each bridge once and only once? Pause the video now if you'd like to answer it for yourself. Leonard Euler, one of my favorite mathematicians, was on the problem. He realized it didn't depend on the details of the path through the city or how long the bridges were. The only thing that mattered was the order he crossed the bridges in. The shape of the path could be deformed and stretched and the overall answer would be the same. By reducing the problem to a set of lines and vertices, he set the groundwork for a new field of mathematics called topology. In topology, shapes are equivalent if they can be continually deformed into one another. That means you can stretch them, twist them, crumple them, or bend them, and they're still considered the same shape. What you can't do is create new holes or close existing holes, make any tears or glue anything together. These would be considered different shapes. The motivation behind thinking about shapes this way is that some geometric problems don't depend on the exact shape of the objects, but rather on the way they're put together. Similarly, the topology of the universe can tell us a lot about how it behaves on very large scales. And by the way, Euler showed that there was no path through Konigsberg that crossed every bridge only once. When cosmologists ask about the shape of our universe, they're asking about the topology of our universe. So how do we begin to answer a question like that? We're inside our universe, we can't exactly just look out and see. Also, there are literally infinitely many different types of topology. How can we narrow down which one our universe might be? Well, we might not be able to directly observe the topology of the universe, but we can observe something that will give us clues. It's geometry. Geometry and topology are closely related, but they're different. They both focus on shapes and space, but different aspects. Geometry focuses on the fine-grained local measurements of things like angles, areas, and curvature, while topology focuses on how these local pieces are stitched together into an overarching shape. Knowing a shape's geometry can give us clues about what its topology might be. And luckily for us, the geometry of the universe is something we've been studying for ages. On relatively small scales, like on the scale of stars or black holes, or even clusters of galaxies, we've observed that space can be curved. You've probably seen a similar demonstration to this one. A heavy object deforms a sheet of material. In the same way, a massive object like a sun or a planet deforms the fabric of space-time. Now imagine a photon of light traveling in space. Photons take the shortest path between objects, which is a straight line. But if a photon passes near a massive object, the path appears curved, since space-time itself is curved. It seems odd, but this path is still straight and still the shortest distance between two points. We can observe the curving of photons in space by looking in the direction of massive objects. The images of galaxies behind them are distorted, an effect of the curving of space. So we know that on small scales, space can be curvy, but what does this mean for its geometry? How do its angles and areas all relate? Well, there are three basic types of geometry that space can have. Spherical, like the Earth. 
flat or Euclidean as mathematicians say, or hyperbolic, which means it curves inward like a Pringle. These geometries can be recognized mathematically in a few ways. When we draw a triangle on flat space, the angles add up to 180 degrees. But on a spherical space, they add up to more than 180 degrees. And on a hyperbolic space, they add up to less than 180 degrees. We can also distinguish between these geometries with parallel lines. In flat space, they will remain parallel forever. In spherical space, they eventually converge, just like the longitudinal lines on a globe. And in hyperbolic space, parallel lines diverge. So these are the different geometries that space can have. But there's a problem with this analysis. We've overlooked something big. So far, we've been working on the scales of stars, black holes, and clusters of galaxies. Pretty small scales in comparison to the entire universe. What's the problem with that, you say? Well, imagine hundreds of years ago, a group of scientists got together to try to determine the geometry of the Earth. They each hold a string, which is held by one of their partners, as they stand far away from each other. They make a triangle and measure the angles between the strings. What do they find? The angles all add up to 180 degrees. Did they just prove the Earth is flat? The problem is that our scientists didn't look at the Earth on large enough scales. If they had, they'd see that the geometry of the Earth is spherical. So sometimes, the local geometry of something doesn't tell us its global geometry. To find the large-scale geometry of the universe, we would have to look at scales much larger than our solar system, our galaxy, or even all the nearby galaxies. We would have to look at scales that encompass the entire observable universe. So, can we do this? Yes, we can with this thing. This is the cosmic microwave background. It's the largest picture of the universe we can observe, 93 billion light years across. It's a baby picture of our universe when it was just 380,000 years old. It's the farthest back in the history of the universe we can see with light. Even though the entire cosmic microwave background is remarkably uniform, there are spots that are a little brighter or a little dimmer. Scientists can look at the cosmic microwave background to determine the geometry of the universe on large scales. Remember how in spherical space, parallel lines eventually converge? If our universe had spherical geometry, the size of a spot on the cosmic microwave background would appear larger. This is because light reaching our eye would be warped by the curving of space, so that when we looked back out, it would appear as though the spot was bigger. On the other hand, hyperbolic geometry would cause the apparent size of a spot on the cosmic microwave background to appear smaller. And flat or Euclidean space would cause the spots to look pretty close to their actual size. In 2013, the space telescope WMAP measured these spots and showed that they were indeed very close to the same size they appeared. The large scale geometry of the universe was very, very, very close to flat. Now it's important to clarify what I mean by flat. Our universe isn't two-dimensional, it has three spatial dimensions. Flat here just refers to the geometry of our universe, its angles and parallel lines and all that stuff. So is our universe an infinite three-dimensional Euclidean plane? This is the simplest example of a 3D topology with flat geometry, but it turns out there are many more. In fact, mathematicians have proven that there are exactly 18 three-dimensional topologies with flat geometry. I would show them to you, but they're extremely difficult, if not impossible to visualize. Don't get me wrong, my animator Tom is great, but I'm not sure even he could draw 3D topologies as viewed from the fourth dimension. But don't worry, because we can imagine them by looking at similar two-dimensional surfaces, which we will do. But first, let's take a step back how can other topologies have flat geometry? Well, take this piece of paper. Now it's a cylinder. If I draw a triangle on the surface of this cylinder, its angles add up to 180 degrees. Parallel lines remain parallel. This cylinder has flat geometry, but its topology is different from a flat sheet of paper. Glue the ends of a cylinder together and you get a donut or a torus, another topology with flat geometry. 
Some other topologies with flat geometry are a Mobius strip and a Klein bottle. It's pretty insane to think our universe could be shaped like a Klein bottle. So, there are 18 topologies that our universe might be. Can we shrink that number down even further? Yes! Let's start by looking for differences between them. We'll start with the biggest difference, the one that separates these topologies from the Euclidean plane. The Euclidean plane is infinite in size, while these topologies are finite. This is important because we can actually observe the finiteness from inside our own universe, but it wouldn't look like what you might expect. To understand, imagine a universe shaped like the surface of a torus. If you walked far enough in one direction, you would eventually return to where you started. This would happen in multiple directions. Now these paths look curved because the space itself is curved, but just like with the geometry of space in our universe, the paths are actually straight. Light travels in straight lines. So if you looked straight ahead, you'd see yourself from the back. This can get trippy. Visualizing what it's like on a two dimensional torus is tricky. In fact, it's so tricky that cosmologists have developed a tool to make it easier for us flatten the torus back to the Euclidean plane and study things there. This doesn't change any fundamental geometry. It's just a tool to help make things more visual and relatable to us. By flattening the torus to the Euclidean plane, we can understand how light and matter would move on a torus without worrying about bending or curving. Okay, so if you walked out of the right edge of the room, you would just re-enter on the left edge, like those old school video games. But to you, it would seem like walking through infinitely many rooms that all looked the same. If you stood and stared straight ahead, the light from the back of your head would hit the left edge of the room and reappear on the right edge, continuing to travel to your eye. So you'd see copies of yourself if you looked forward or backwards. Now remember on a torus there are multiple looping pathways, so there are many directions that light can travel to your eye. This means that when you look out from the room, you would see infinitely many copies of yourself in multiple directions. So that's what living on the surface of a 2D torus would look like. Now what about living inside a 3D torus? Well, in the same way we can use a flat square to help understand living on a two-dimensional torus, we can use a cube to understand living in a three-dimensional torus. Just as life on a 2D torus was like living in a house of infinite identical rectangular rooms, Life in a 3D torus is like living in a house of infinite identical cubic rooms. You would see a kind of hall of mirrors effect, except the copies of yourself are not reflections. A 3D torus is one possibility of the topology of our universe, but other topologies would present themselves differently. If our universe's topology had some extra twists or rotations, you could go out the right side of the room and come in the left side upside down or in a different place, or any number of variations in between. We can actually look for this Hall of Mirrors effect out in our universe. Depending on the orientation of the Hall of Mirrors, if it's flipped or rotated, we might be able to pinpoint exactly which topology our universe is. Specifically, cosmologists are looking for what they call closed loops, those loops where light can reach us from multiple directions. This might look like the same galaxy in two different parts of the sky. It could look exactly the same, or maybe flipped, or rotated, or even a different age if one of the light paths is much longer than the other. Unfortunately, this makes the task of spotting a closed loop pretty hard. Even if there are multiple images of the same galaxy in different parts of the sky, they could look so different that we may not recognize them. So how do you think we can get around this problem? That's right, the handy cosmic microwave background. This is a snapshot of the universe when it was all the same age. Remember how the cosmic microwave background has places that are slightly warmer or colder? This gives us places to look for repeating patterns, specifically pairs of matching circles in the sky. If we find these matching circles, this might be a sign of a closed loop in the universe. 
In the 2000s and 2010s, scientists searched for closed loops in the universe, but they didn't find any. This made them suspect one of two things. Either the universe is an infinite Euclidean plane, we can't find any closed loops because there simply aren't any, or the universe is so big that even if there are closed loops, their light hasn't had time to reach us, so we just can't see them. With these unpromising suspicions, research into the shape of the universe stalled. Until recently. Earlier this year, a team of scientists going by the name COMPACT published a paper that revived the question. They pointed out that scientists have only ruled out patterns that would be expected if the universe were a three-dimensional torus that was smaller than the size of the observable universe. But there are still plenty of exotic topologies that can't be ruled out and are actually consistent with recent cosmic microwave background observations. They also found that even if the universe is so big that we can't observe the closed loops, there would be faint detectable traces in the cosmos that we can still search for. With this publication, it's clear that the mystery of the universe's shape is far from solved. The hunt for the Hall of Mirrors continues. As we search for answers out in the cosmos, it's exciting to think about how much more we could still learn as we push further into space. There's so much left to discover, even within our own solar system. I recently read that in a few years, SpaceX plans to launch several uncrewed starships to Mars, bringing us closer to exploring new frontiers. Now, when it comes to anything to do with Elon Musk, news outlets are heavily politicized, which makes it difficult to get a clear idea of the truth. Media coverage tends to be more focused on Elon Musk himself, which biases their reporting on the science. Thankfully, today's sponsor is the perfect solution to these problems. Ground News is the website and app designed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a visual breakdown of the political bias, reliability, and ownership, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. Ground News makes it really easy to compare headlines and see how these biases might affect the framing. They even have a bias comparison feature that highlights specific differences in reporting. One of my favorite features is their blind spot feed, which shows you stories underreported by either side of the political spectrum. For example, if you lean right, you probably missed this story on Elon boosting false claims about the election. As a fellow critical thinker, you know that we can't just rely on one piece of data or a single perspective to get the full picture. Ground News allows you to critically analyze news the way scientists analyze data by comparing sources, checking for bias, and building a well-rounded understanding. Right now, I'm offering 40% off their Vantage subscription, which is what I use for unlimited access to all of their amazing features. You can access this discount through my link or by scanning the QR code on screen. Go to ground.news slash upandatom or click the link in the video description and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.